My name is Simon Pearce. Some of you may be familiar with me. I'm a genealogist for Ancestry and Ancestry Pro Genealogist. Many of you watching will have ancestors who served during the First World War. It's, you know, it's a conflict that touched many, many families. It, it, it's, you know, throughout my own research, whether it be my own or for clients, it's hard to not come across someone, if you like, that didn't have some kind of uh, connection to the war, you know, whether it be on the home front or overseas. Some of you may be relatively new to genealogy and family history, and maybe some of the tips I can give you today will help you with your own research. My First World War research and journey, if you like, was kick-started by some memorabilia that I came across, um, some autograph books and, um, and some letters, and it really, really helped get my um, research started. If you do have memorabilia, whether it be First World War, Second World War, or anything relating to your family, um, speak to family about it. it. You never know, they're just that snippet of information, that little story, a letter, it could lead to further research. Just see what you have. If you see that um, someone serving had a child or married during the war, have a look at the marriage record or the birth record. Quite often there will be a reference to military service. So in the marriage record, for example, um, the spouse, uh, his, uh, the groom, his occupation, it may contain his regiment, a number, um, a unit. Really, really fascinating and useful snippets of information. Birth record should say what the father's um, occupation was you know, a soldier, a number, a unit. Just bear that in mind with your own research. If you're struggling to research a military ancestor, the birth or marriage record may help. And of course, a service record. Now, some of you may be familiar with these records. They are absolutely fantastic sources. They are the best source for researching your military ancestors. Um, we have them on Ancestry for the British Army. Around about 60% were destroyed or badly damaged during the Second World War. Uh, it's really frustrating if you know if your ancestors' records don't appear in that collection, but always check. It's always worth looking at. These records are amazing. If you haven't looked already, uh, see if you can find a service record for an ancestor. If you can't find one for your ancestor, have a look to see if there's anyone maybe that served from your local area um, or just do a random search for a name just to see what they're like. They are an absolute gold mine of information. And I say to anyone, you know, we may not have letters or diaries um, for our own ancestors, but if you ever can find a letter or a diary or even an interview with a soldier who served in the same unit, in the same battalion as your ancestor, have a look because it can provide you a really, really close insight into what they were experiencing. Often they're held by the Regimental Archive. Um, the Imperial War Museum has a fantastic collection of letters, but also audio interviews. Have a look, really, really worth looking at. And of course, um, for a more general regimental point of view, war diaries are an amazing source for First World War research. If you're researching an ancestor who saw action, who served overseas, get the war diary. We have them for the Western Front, so for France and Belgium on Ancestry, and we also have the Gallipoli war diaries. Um, really, really interesting, a day-to-day -day account and insight into the fighting. The kind of information it reveals, you know, the number of casualties, the weather, the terrain, um, blow-by-blow accounts of battles, um, maps, um, appendices, all sorts of interesting information. So have a look at the war diary if you are researching someone that served during the First World War, because the kind of information you can find is absolutely priceless. Of course, we do a fantastic job of commemorating and remembering soldiers that died, uh, servicemen and women that died during the First and Second World Wars and beyond. But it's always worth remembering those that, that served and came back because they did indeed suffer. Some of you may have seen this collection before. You may have used it for your own ancestors. Um, it's, uh, it relates to uh, the Silver War Badge, which was issue, issued to uh, servicemen and women that were honorably, honorably discharged for their service. It might have been due to wounds or sickness or being unfit for service. It was often worn on the Hell. Um, it was a good indicator to people that you had served, you had done your bit. Um, a really, really useful source. If you are researching an ancestor that was discharged, have a look and see if they do appear in the Civil War badge role. It's a great source um, if you don't have the service record, because it will often, um, it will always tell you when the person, that when the soldier uh, enlisted, which is a great little reference if you don't have the service record. Of course, we also have uh, naval service records um, on Ancestry. They're the um, uh, they're known as the uh, Registers of Seamen Services. They list the ships, the uh, pro uh, appointments, the dates they were serving. Really, really useful. And uh, airmen's records as well, covering 18, 1918 to 1940. So First World War pension index ledgers that we have on, um, that we have, um, again, uh, just a, an excellent source if you don't have the service records. So another really, really interesting uh, collection. In terms of a First World War experience, we have a lot of records available to help you really kind of get to the crux of your ancestors' service, really, really understand what they were doing. 
there is just so much available to research our first world war ancestors and that's what makes it such an interesting um an interesting field for research don't forget to check out the other videos from ancestry for more tips and advice for researching your family history